Hey guys, you know that driving around the world overlanding has become a thing. And in this video, Tommy and I are going to give you the top 10 vehicles to take around the world. Starting with this, it's brand new Tommy, it's the brand new Mercedes-Benz Metris Weekender. And tell them what makes it cool. Well, this is one of the coolest ways to go overlanding out there because this starts life as a standard Metris, but this is no standard Metris because this one has a huge hole in the roof and a place to stand up. This is a pop-up camper with your full-size bed here. This is old school. This is like what you'd find in some of the old school Volkswagen buses. So we've got both front seats that swivel, we've got a table here, and we've got a bench seat that folds down into another bed. This is a great way to go camping and it will still fit in your average parking garage. Yeah, and best of all, you can get four people to sleep in this. And better of all, it's right from Mercedes, so you can buy it at your local Mercedes dealership, but it's not cheap. Let's show them the outside and talk about how much it costs. The cool thing about the Metris is it isn't as huge as the Sprinter van, but the bad thing about the Metris in the past is you haven't been able to stand up in it. Well, this pop-up Weekender completely fixes both of those issues. Now, it's still your standard front-wheel drive Metris with a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder, but check this out. Mercedes has fit this with a set of Scorpion all-terrain tires, a nice aggressive tire to kind of fit with that adventurous look. Of course, you've got the main pop-up section and a little bit of an additional lip here for aerodynamics, just to keep it nice and quiet as you drive down the road. Of course, slides on both sides of the vehicle. And in the front here, you still have a lot of the nice Mercedes touches. So you've got, you know, full leather wrapped steering wheel. It's still a Mercedes vehicle filler just like most Mercedes vans down here on the side. Should we take a look at the rear? In the back, it still retains a ton of functionality. The rear seat actually slides forward and backwards depending on how much room you need. And you've got another storage area up here. And look at this, some curtains as well. Let's see how these work. So that you can simply close out the world and hide away in your private Mercedes on wheels. And then in the rear here, a tow hitch. This one has a Rocky Mount bike rack. If you wanna buy one of these weekenders, these are coming to dealerships right now. And they start at about $70,000 with the conversion already done. At number nine, Tommy has to be, of course, this. A much more American way to go around the world off-road. This is, of course, the brand new Ford Expedition. And once upon a time, the Ford Excursion, especially with a diesel, was the go-to American overlander. But that vehicle is no more, so now we have this. And at about $65,000, not only is it 4x4 and off-road capable, extremely comfortable, and extremely big, it's also cheaper than the Mercedes-Benz. Now, it doesn't have a pop-up, it doesn't even have sleeping for four, but it will tow a lot more weight than a Metris. And if you want to tow your ultimate overland camper, this is the way to do it. Expedition here seats up to eight passengers, and I'd argue that if you fold down the third and second row seats, you probably could sleep in there pretty comfortably. It's also available in an FX4 package, which gives you underbody protection and a locking rear diff. Of course, the Expedition has gone to a independent rear, but for most light off-roading and for most trailer hauling, this is a truck for you. At number eight, we have these bad boys right here. Of course, we're talking about the Jeep Wrangler and the Jeep Gladiator, both of which are traditional off-road vehicles, solid axles, body on frame. Now, there's a couple different engine options in the Wrangler. There's a two liter and a 3.6 liter V6 gas engine, but the one I would have is the three liter eco diesel if I plan on overlanding, because almost 30 MPG on the highway sounds pretty attractive. Of course, if you need more room, there's also the Gladiator. You can put some truck bed accessories on the back, and rumor has it coming soon, this Gladiator is also gonna get that three liter eco diesel can't wait to see how that one performs. At number seven, Tommy has got to be the most iconic overlander of them all. And of course, I'm talking about this, the Toyota Land Cruiser. And whether you get the 60 series or you decide to get a little bit more modern and you go for the 80 series or you get very, very modern and you go for the 100 series, the Toyota Land Cruiser has been the go-to overlanding rig for much of the last 20 to 30 years for everywhere in the world. And there's a reason for that. And that reason is defined simply by one word, reliability. 
if you want something that will go not 50,000, not 100, not 150,000, but 250,000 miles without trouble, then the Land Cruiser is probably your best choice, as Tommy found out in his recent Land Cruiser video. So be sure to click on the link below to check that video out. Yeah, but this one's an imposter. It's a Lexus. Oh no, it's a Lexus. <laughs> If you want the top dog Land Cruiser, you gotta go for this one, the 200 series. This came out in 2008, and this is the latest version, the Heritage Edition. It's got some really cool bronze wheels, a roof rack, and that classic badging down the side. However, these are expensive beasts. They come in at around $90,000. So if you want the latest and greatest in Land Cruiser, you're gonna have to pay up, but you do get a lot of engine. 5.7 liter V8, eight speed automatic, and this thing will go just about anywhere your pocketbook will let you go because I wouldn't want to be scraping the rockers on this beast. If you're looking for something a little bit more road going but also a little bit more refined, there's a lot of companies out there taking standard vans and turning them into long distance road going cruisers. Companies such as Explore. This for example starts life as a transit van but this one as you see here comes in at close to $74,000 of coal. Of course this one is full of leather and comfy chairs it's also not going to go anywhere near as far as that Land Cruiser, but if you're just looking to stay to the highway, this is not a bad option. We're halfway down our list at number five with the new Toyota 4Runner Trail Edition. And this is a brand new special edition that just came out here at the Chicago Auto Show. So the Trail Edition starts life as an SR5, but it's got some special upgrades such as TRD off-road wheels, that cool Yakima roof rack, and a cooler in the back specially made for this limited edition. It also has tan stitching. It's just a much more affordable way to get into an off-road 4Runner than upgrading to a TRD off-road or TRD Pro. And I love the gray finish on this model with those specific wheels. Take a look at the back here. You can see that cooler with as well that slide out tray. So this is also aimed at kind of that overlanding world where you can slide stuff in and out without having to lift stuff over each other to get your big items throughout the vehicle. Super excited about the Trail Edition. It's coming out in several different models on Toyota and it looks like an affordable way to go do some cool off-roading. So yes, you can take a Honda CRV off-road or at least make it look like it'll go off-road because this is one cool CRV here in the Honda booth at the Chicago Auto Show. This one has been customized for off-road use. So in the front, we have an aftermarket bumper here, of course, there's not a lot of off-road community around these new CRVs, so this is all custom work with Baja design lights coming along the side here. One and a half inches of lift with a custom off-road style sidestep here. And my favorite part have to be these tires. They're mounted on 17-inch KMC wheels, but they are Terra grapplers. They are rid grapplers, actually. Uh, really aggressive looking design with this custom topographical map here along the side and a rooftop tent because you have to have a roof nest if you want to have any kind of cred nowadays in the overlanding community apparently. But come along the back here, we also have this one of a kind custom swing out spare tire. So now we have a full size spare tire for when you get that flat out in the wilderness and some jerry cans for good extra use. Let me know in the comments section below, what do you think of these lifted crossovers? This is a new 2020 CRV. I think it looks brilliant. I'd love to try it off-road, and I'd love to see if it'll go actually farther than a standard CRV. Tommy, I'll let our commenters fill up the comment section, but here's my comment. I think this car proves this important truism, and that is if you lift a car two inches, put some big-ass rubber on it and a rooftop tent, no matter how pedestrian, no matter how grocery-getting the car is, it'll look that much cooler. And I think this CRV proves that point magnificently. You might be thinking that next up on our list is the full-size Lexus LX based on the Land Cruiser, but it's not. It's actually its little brother, the Lexus GX. This car is based on the Land Cruiser Prado, a vehicle we don't get here in the US, but this is a serious off-road beast. Big ol' V6 underneath the hood, a 4.6 liter, made it to a standard automatic transmission, but an old-school four-wheel drive system with some new-school goodies such as crawl control systems that will help you navigate off-road terrain. There's even new for 2020, an off-road package available. If you're wondering on pricing, the Lexus GX you see here comes in at $59,000. 
but it starts at 53 grand and you get a lot of leather line luxury on the inside. So you're ready to go around the world and you've looked at the top nine vehicles and none of them have quite met your fancy. Well, at number one is this one right behind me and it is of course the all new, the brand new Land Rover Defender. As iconic as a Land Cruiser, as iconic maybe even more so than a Jeep. And Tommy, why don't you tell them why this is number one on our list? The Land Rover Defender, as it's known today, came to light in the late 1940s, and this was a vehicle that conquered Africa. Of course, the continent and not the people. But let's quickly talk about what makes the Defender so cool. So we've known and we've seen that a lot of underneath is based on the Land Rover Discovery, which isn't a bad thing because this vehicle has standard air suspension here in the US that can raise to off-road heights to make this thing pretty good off-road. It's got two engine options, a two liter Ingenium four-cylinder or a straight six turbocharged engine. And there's a lot of different packs. This one you see here has the Explorer pack. So on the side here, we've got this really cool raised intake. And then of course, we've got the big roof rack, ladder on the side, this is the off-roady one. One thing I'm not a big fan of, the old Land Rovers had diamond plating on the hood so you could stand on it. This new one also has diamond plating but it's plastic, which means you don't want to be standing on that. But the new Defender has gotten so much more luxurious on the inside. It's got leather on everything. I really like these somewhat cloth, somewhat leather seating surfaces. They're pretty aggressive looking, and of course, exposed screw heads throughout. Overall, it's a much more comfortable vehicle than the old one. If you want the short wheelbase two-door, you can still get it. It's called the Defender 90. It's coming soon, but the 110 will be available here in the US sometime in late spring. And Tommy, it starts at about 50k, but ironically, the two-door is going to be more expensive than this four-door. Yeah, it will be. I think they're going to figure they're selling a lot more four-doors and two-doors, so this is the one that people are really going to want, unless you're a true enthusiast. But I'm really excited to get this thing on the trail and see how it performs in the real world. And you know what? As always, we have to do a TFL bonus, so let's go give them one more because, well, we're TFL. And Tommy, our bonus has to be this, and I think it's definitely the most expensive vehicle on our list because, well, it's a one-of-a-kind concept truck. It's the Rebel OTG or off-the-grid concept. And if you look at it, it's pretty much ready to go around the world. I mean, you've got everything that you need. You've got your slide-out sink with your three-burner stove. You've got your refrigerator. You've got, of course, your mandatory shade, which is now a great way to keep dry and out of the sun when camping. And if you look up here, heck yeah, it's the compulsory rooftop tent. Now we talked to the guys at Ram and they told us that they're gonna get big into the off-road overlanding world. So expect something like this at some point to actually be available and not just be a one-off concept. And I gotta tell you, this is overlanding America style. Thanks for watching, and as always, check out TFL Car, TFL Truck, and of course, all of our other stations for news views and your best top 10 vehicles to go around the world reviews. See you guys next time, ciao.